specific aims and objectives of the at-risk children's program uh, in the comprehensive overview just presented. I doubt whether anyone is in doubt about the urgency of the moment with respect to providing the necessary lifelines, confidence and support to vulnerable children and youth to enable them to take ownership of their lives in dignity. The problem, however, is a complex one. First, we know already that we have an unacceptably high number of out-of-school children, children of school age. Then we have a high number of young people, long past primary school age, in some cases long past secondary school age, who roam the streets with no education and no formal employable skills. Of this category are a large number of young women. Then we have yet another vulnerable category, children and young persons, especially female, who are victims of abuse and trafficking. With a population of over 200 million, and we are adding 5 million more every year, and with over 60% of, of that population being young, there is a clearer sense of the present and the potential problem. How do we tackle the sheer enormity, multiplicity, and complexity of the problem? Surely it cannot be uh, the federal government alone attempting to do that. This is a federation. And both primary, secondary education, and healthcare are constitutionally state functions. So there are jurisdictional and structural problems also to take care of. The federal government has, in response, taken a multidimensional approach. In 2019, the president made two crucial policy statements. The first was the plan of, of government to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within a decade. The second was the strict enforcement of the laws on free and compulsory education for all children at the primary school level. And the president emphasized that it is a criminal offense in Nigeria to fail or refuse to implement the law. In the same year, the Ministry of Humanitarian uh, Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development was established to implement the highly successful social investment program of the government, aside from responsibility for humanitarian safety and disaster management. In 2016, the Rule of Law Advisory Team was established in the presidency. And one of the team's main tasks was to ensure that Following the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, there is an effective coordination of responses to cases of sexual and gender-based violence. Since then, the team has supported the establishment of sexual and gender-based violence response teams across the country. Last year, on the advice of the Presidential Economic Advisory Council, the President inaugurated the National Poverty Reduction with the Growth Strategy Committee, with the omnibus term of reference of implementing any other effort that would enhance the attainment of the objective of lifting 100 million people out of poverty in 10 years. So the at risk Children's Program, ACP, which is domiciled in my office, as you've heard, is one of the independent initiatives of the National Poverty Reduction with Growth Strategy Committee and it is an important component of the variety of government interventions that are designed to complement and support existing initiatives of our administration in dealing with the problems of vulnerable children and young people. So the, pro the program will provide a safe space, and we've heard uh, a bit of this already, for the mentoring and training of these children, specific emphasis on basic literacy and numeracy skills, health and nutrition, entrepreneurial skills, digital skills, sports and life skills, and, and, other, you know, and other related skills. But at the heart of the at-risk children's program is the idea that every Nigerian child counts. A nation will ultimately be measured by how it treats its most vulnerable citizens. We we'll recognize that we cannot make progress as a people while a significant population of our children, those to whom the future belongs, are left on the margins of society, deprived of the opportunity to discover and fulfill their potential. 
So our key is aimed at giving a new lease of life to millions of children who through no fault of theirs have found themselves without hope or support. In times of national emergency, the divisions between state, civil, society, and the private sector are unhelpful. All sectors must make common cause because it's the right thing to do. In no effort is the old adage truer that it takes a village to raise a child than with vulnerable children. The fate of our most vulnerable children is a cause that should bring all of us in government, in civil society, in the private sector, together in a massive collaborative effort. So let me express our sincere appreciation to state governments who have so far signed up to the At Risk Children's, uh, uh, At -risk Children's Program at P. We particularly commend uh, the governors of the pilot states, Borno, Sokoto, Gombe, Kaduna, and Ikiti, as well as other state executives that have indicated interest in joining this multi-stakeholder effort geared towards restoring hope to millions of marginalized young Nigerian citizens all over the country. I'm also grateful to see that the development partners, private sector, civil society, and friends of Nigeria in different fields have identified with our P in this renewed effort to, posit to positively change the fortunes of our young people. Their support has been invaluable, especially in the five pilot states. The local government authorities as well have been incredible in their support, and of course our religious and traditional institutions have been very instrumental in the successful takeoff of our P. These efforts must be aligned to work in tandem especially because they need to, to be addressed in a manner that also engages with the other deprivations around health and empowerment. So the federal government will continue to provide the leadership, the support, the financial support in particular, and logistics needed to ensure that this program achieves its goals. We'll continue to seek the close partnership of Nigerians across all sectors to guarantee sustainability, scale and, and impact. The only way to guarantee the long-term peace and prosperity of our community is to invest in our children by providing opportunities for them to thrive and be productive within their chosen path, therefore thereby giving them hope for a better future. Finally, let me commend uh, Hajia Meriam, sometimes called Hajia Dr. Meriam Owais. <laughs> Special Advisor to the President on Social Investment Programs, the Coordinator of the ACP Program, and her slim and nimble team for their passion and commitment to this cause, and also for the very hard work of putting together the collaboration of the states and all of our other partners that have made ACP uh, possible. Your Excellency is honored guests. We've begun a journey that must, in the end, give soccer and hope to millions of young people. And it's a great comfort and encouragement to know that we do not walk this path alone. Thank you all for your support. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.